Previously, we looked at scalar line integrals, line integrals over vector fields, and scalar surface integrals. Now we want to look at surface integrals of a vector field. So here's the definition, which I'll motivate in just a second, and then we'll also build like a more calculatable result. So let's let F be a continuous vector field on a domain containing an orientable surface S. Then this is the object that we're defining. So the surface integral over S of F dot DS. So this would be the surface integral of the vector field. So that's going to be equal to the surface integral, the scalar surface integral, I should say, of F dot N, where N is the orientation of the surface. So let's go ahead and say N is uh, the unit normal that orients the surface. So I've got another video where we talk about orientations of the surface. So this is the orientation of the surface, this unit normal. Okay, so the idea behind this is the following one. We want to think about having some sort of two-dimensional surface in a vector field. And then what we want to do is measure the components of that vector field as they path, pass through the surface. But if you go to a single point along the surface and you look at well how much is the vector field like pushing the surface at that point that's going to depend on the component of that vector field that's pointing in the normal direction to that surface but how do you calculate the component of that vector field that's pointing in the normal direction to that surface? Well, you do it by calculating f dot n. And so that's why this f dot n shows up here and here in the definition of the surface integral of the vector field. Now the next thing that I want to do is build a calculatable formula. And let's recall that R, U, and V could parametrize a surface. Generally, we're like parametrizing surfaces whenever we're doing this. And we have the normal vector is given by R, U cross R, V over the magnitude of R, U cross R, V. And so again, we looked at that in a previous video. We argued why RU cross RV is perpendicular to the surface, and then we turn it into a unit vector by uh, dividing by that magnitude. Now let's go ahead and pick up at this point right here and simplify this guy using the fact that we have this parametrization. And I should say that here we're parametrizing over a domain D in R2. So if we pick up here, we can rewrite this thing in the following way. So this is going to be the double integral over D. Now it's no longer surface integral, it's just a double integral from like much earlier in the course. And now we have F dot N, but now notice that F is going to be evaluated on that surface. So I'll write it as F of R U V dot N, but we know what N is. So N is equal to R U cross R V over the magnitude of RU cross RV. Great. Um, I'll put in parentheses around this. And then furthermore, we know what the scalar surface integral uh, differential component is. And that's from a previous video. That is the magnitude of RU cross RV. And then DA, where that's just the normal differential component from the double integral like in the plane. But the great thing here is that this cancels with this. And we're left with this like super nice formula, which is the double integral over D of F, and I'll not put the R U V just to make it a little simpler, dotted with R U cross R V D A. I'll go ahead and maybe put parentheses around this because what we've done now is written this surface integral in terms of a double integral. And what is it? It's just that vector field dotted with this uh, cross product made up of the parameterization of the surface. So let's go ahead and switch that out here because that'll be a much better formula to work with. Okay, so I've switched, switched that definition out for a nice observation. So if R U V with U V in D, which is a subset of the real plane, parametrizes our surface S, then the double 
then the surface integral of this vector field uh, over s is equal to just the double integral of the vector field dotted with r u cross r v, and that's just a plain old double integral which you can use, but which you can calculate by methods much earlier in the course. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and we'll look at an example. Okay, so for our example, we'll look at this one. So it's the surface integral over the vector field where the vector field is z comma x comma zero, and then our surface is the cylinder uh, with radius one in the first octant with z less than or equal to four. So let's go ahead and draw a picture of that. So notice it's just gonna be in the first octant, so that means it's going to be above the first quadrant. So we can make a picture like this. Notice I'm not putting dots to make it go behind there. It's a unit cylinder, so that means it goes through there one and one along the x and the z axis. And then it goes up here like that. And then maybe we could say this point right here is four. Okay, great. So it's just that kind of sheet right here that's bent in the first octant like that. So what does the first octant mean? Well, it means x, y, and z are all bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and parameterize this. We'll be uh, inspired by cylindrical coordinates again. So uh, let's recall cylindrical coordinates give us x equals r cos theta, um, y equals r sine theta, and z equals z. But here, we want r to be equal to 1 because we want to fix ourselves just to this cylinder. And then, further, we want theta to just be between 0 and pi over 2 because that puts us between the positive x and the positive z axis. And then uh, we're going to want z to go between 0 and 4 again because that's given as well. So notice that gives us our parameterization with variables theta and z as uh, cos theta, sine theta, comma, 1. Okay, good. Now uh, let's go ahead and take this cross product. So r theta cross r z. So that's going to be equal to, um, we need to do our determinant. So i, j, k, and then here we'll have minus sine theta, uh, cos theta, zero, 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 one. Great. So let's see what we get. In the first component, we'll have cosine theta. So here we have cosine theta. In the second component, we'll have sine theta. And then in the third component, we'll have zero. So that's our r theta cross r z. Now we need to go ahead and uh, finish it off. So I'll maybe put a star next to this and notice that star is going to be equal to, so we can take our theta integral from zero to uh, pi over two and our z integral from zero to four. So notice that these bounds make up our region D in the language of this observation over here. And then we've got F, which is Z comma X comma zero, but notice that that is going to be Z comma cosine theta comma zero because here we have, this is like our X component, our Y component, and our Z component. Oh, sorry, this should have been just Z and not one. Okay, great. So um, I'll put a little note previously in the video for that. Okay, so we've got Z comma cosine theta comma zero for our F, and then we're dotting that with this guy right here, this R theta cross R Z, so let's look at that. That's gonna be cos theta sine theta comma zero, and then we have dA, but our dA is going to be dz d theta because we've chosen an order of integration. So nice, that's gonna give us this uh, fairly simple double integral, the integral from zero to pi over two, and then the integral from zero to four of z times cosine theta uh, plus cosine theta times sine theta. And then we have uh, dz d theta. Okay, so I'll go ahead and bring that up and we'll finish it off. Okay, so we just applied this observation over here to get to this point. We broke this uh, surface integral of a vector field down to this pretty simple double integral over a rectangle. So notice our z integral is on the inside, so let's go ahead and do that first. So on the outside, we still have our theta integral, and on the inside, we're gonna have one half z squared uh, cosine theta plus z 
sine theta, cosine theta. Now we're evaluating that from z equals zero to z equals four, and then we'll do our theta integral on the outside. Okay, great. So notice that's gonna give us the integral from zero to pi halves of, so plugging in z equals four into here, we'll have 16 over two, which is eight. So we have eight cosine theta, then plugging z equals four into here, we'll have four uh, sine theta, cosine theta, great, and then our d theta integral. Now, the next thing that I want to notice is I can actually do a u substitution here. If uh, u is equal to sine theta, then the derivative of sine theta is uh, cosine theta, so I get du there. I'm not going to do all the details. I mean, this is the very end of a calculus three class, so this stuff should be fairly second nature at this point. Um, so that allows us to take uh, the antiderivative pretty smoothly. Notice here we're going to get minus eight uh, sine theta for that because the antiderivative of, oh sorry, we're just going to get 8 sine theta, antiderivative of cosine is sine, and here we're going to get plus 2 sine squared theta. Again, because we get u squared over 2, but u is equal to sine theta. Okay, great. Now we're going to go ahead and evaluate this from 0 to pi halves. Notice plugging in pi halves, we're going to get 1 because sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that's going to give us 8 plus 2, which is 10. Plugging in 0, we're going to get 0 because sine of 0 is 0. So our final answer is 10. Okay, so that's a good place to end. We'll uh, pick up in another video and do two more examples.